Welcome back. Hopefully I've got my audio situation improved here a little bit. Uh, had some technology issues on top of 100 plus degree weather with AC running around the clock. Um, has not made for ideal recording. So let's get started. Uh, we've got our UV snapshot loaded up here in Photoshop and I'm going to come over here to the layers and duplicate this layer call it UV. This is going to always be my top layer. I'm going to come up here and set it to multiply, turn off the background layer, and I'm going to hit Control i to reverse that or invert it. It's uh, Command-I if you're on a Mac. Okay, so let's start bringing in some of the images. I've got a few things loaded up in my source images. And let me go out here. Uh, a lot of these came from uh, either web searches or I bought a few of them uh, from some of the various uh, stock image places. So make sure you don't have any copyright issues when you're using images off the internet. I'm going to come down to my source images. I'm going to open up this in Photoshop. Select all, copy. I'm sure there's a more efficient way. I'm not a Photoshop power user. I'm more of a 3D person. And I'm going to drop this in here and size it down. It's quite a bit larger. Okay. And I'll need to scale it a little bit to get this to fit. Okay, and I'm going to drag that UV layer up here on top so I've got my guides available. And there is a little bit of white trim around there. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to use the magic wand and come over here and select that trim and get rid of it. And I'm going to create another layer and select a color off of the book. And I'm going to fill the page with that using the paint bucket. Okay, and drag that down here. Uh, this is fitting pretty good. Let me just kind of zoom in here. The binding, you want to make sure that the binding is fitting within the region that it uh, wraps around the book correctly. You don't want the top part of the the book cover wrapping around the side of the book or vice versa. So uh, if you need to make some adjustments you may have to come in here and uh, stretch some of this out or reduce it down. And in this case uh, some of the edges down here are not fitting uh, right up against the, the edge of the UV snapshot so I'm going to have to come in here and do a little bit of finessing with that. So just be aware of the edges, like right down here in the corner and this edge along here. I'm probably going to have to scale this up a little bit and possibly come in with the cloning tool and paint out a little bit more. And that's sort of standard practice when you're making custom textures for your 3D models. Okay, and I'm going to move this video along here so I'm assuming a lot of you know how to use Photoshop and can come in and work with your images. Okay, so I'm going to draw another marquee over the pages and with this layer 2 selected, it's kind of my background base color, I'm going to select a little bit lighter color, maybe more like that, and fill that in with a paint bucket. All right, I'm going to come out and grab another image in my source image directory and open that in Photoshop and grab that. Paste it in there and I'm moving it around looking for an area that I like and I'm going to just desaturate that a little. Okay. Something right about here. Okay, and I'm going to cut off the bottom here and I'm going to take down the opacity on this a little bit. Right about there. 
and I want to stain the edges just a little bit. Uh, I don't have a Cintiq or anything fancy. I'm just using a mouse, so uh, bear with me. Hopefully you've got a little bit better setup. Okay, so I'm just going to use a standard brush here and bring the opacity down to about 25. Go ahead and paint on here a little bit. Uh, let me create another layer. Be kind of my grunge layer. Staining kind of the back of the book a little more and the bottom. Okay, so uh, as far as designing, I'm going to just drop some text in here. This is the book that my monster is going to be using. Sort of make up a, a title. I'll call it Once Upon a Monster. And it's not the font I'm going to use, nor the color. Uh, I'm going to maybe sample this gold color in here. Like that. And choose a different font. And scale it down. Got a lowercase a and move that down to here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to create a bevel on here and uh, the inner bevel and smooth is probably fine. And I'm just going to increase the size a little bit. Okay. All right, I'm going to open up another file and Bring in these monsters, and I'm going to grab this one up here on top, copy it, and paste it in here, size it down. And just delete the white background. Okay, I'm going to duplicate the layer, and this one I'm going to set to overlay and this one I'm going to just reduce the opacity down here a little bit so it looks like that we see a little bit of the book coming through and I think I'm going to do the same with these so they're not uh, looking so pronounced okay all right so I'm going to call this my book cover uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on it it's more for demonstration purposes and not design and move on to the next part, which is combining all of these layers into a group. So that's Control G to group them, or Command G if you're on a Mac, and I'm going to call this color. So what we're doing is setting up our channels now for the shader in Maya, and this is going to be the color channel, and I'm going to duplicate this group, and I'm going to call this bump. So we're going to make three texture maps to come in to Maya. And in this one, I'm going to open them up, select all the layers, and merge them. And I'm going to take the saturation out, because we don't need that. So the bump layer, the way that works, is anything that's 50% gray will not have an effect. Uh, anything going towards white, all the way up to white, will have uh, the effect of creating a, a bump in the positive direction. And anything below that 50% gray, down to black, is going to have a negative effect. So it will look like an embossment or indent. So uh, what I want is the light areas here uh, the embossing of the gold and the text to look like it's indented. So I'm going to inverse it, Control I, and then I'm going to open up your images, adjustment, brightness and contrast. I'm going to bring 
the brightness way down and bump up the contrast. I'll probably do that one more time here. Just bring the brightness down again. I think it's more of the contrast I'm after here. Okay, so right about there. Okay, so that's our bump layer, and I may come back here and kind of finesse it a little bit. Uh, you can customize things by creating another layer and selecting a neutral uh, gray, 50% gray, and coming in with your paintbrush and kind of knocking down some areas. So if I wanted to not have an indent across the top here, uh, I can kind of reduce that. It's probably a little too much across there. Uh, same thing down here. So that's a way of customizing and kind of controlling where your uh, bump map is going to be affecting the image. Okay. All right, so I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to duplicate the bump layer now and call this spec for specular. And say OK. And with this one, I'm going to reverse this back to where it was. So uh, anything above black is going to create a specular image. So I want the, the white areas, which would be the text and the gold embossing, to have more of a shine to it than the leather book. And I'm going to bring down the brightness on here. This is way too bright. It's going to be extremely glossy. Okay. And have to do another pass. Okay. And I'm going to turn off that layer that I created. So the spec map is very subtle. Uh, you want it pretty close to black in areas that you don't want much of a sheen on, which would be the leather. So I've got that fairly dark now. If I wanted to, I could go back into the color channel and I could grab the text layer and the monster and bring them back in here and lay them on top and create a little bit brighter uh, reflectivity uh, for the map here. But I'm going to leave it like that. What I'm going to do now is turn off the UV uh, snapshot that's got the image on there and save my file. And this should be going out into my source images directory. So I'm going to back up one, come into source images, and call this book cover two. And saving it as a Photoshop file with the layers. And close that down, come back into Maya. And we're going to attach that Photoshop file now to our shaders that we have here. So the first one I want is the book cover. And it looks like I need to do a little uh, cleanup here. So I'm just going to grab all of these and do a delete by type history, clean that up. So blend two was the book cover. And we can actually relabel that book cover. And under the color channel, this is where the color layer is going to come in from Photoshop. So you want to make sure you use the PSD file and not the standard file. Okay, so I'm going to select PSD file. It's asking me for the image, so I'm going to go out and select that. Open it. And now this is where it allows you to link to the layer set. I'm going to choose color. And we're not seeing it in here because I need to hit 6 on my keyboard to bring up textures. Okay. So we're seeing the, uh, the specularity right now hitting that. Uh, we're going to take care of that in just a minute. Okay, and because we're dealing with multiple layers in the Photoshop file, it's attaching itself to the transparency. It thinks there's an alpha channel in there when there's not, so we need to break that connection. Okay, and there's our book cover. So let's get the bump map in here, and we're going to open up and select another Photoshop file. 
We're currently on uh, the bump tab here, or node, so I'm going to bring this down to point 0.1. And then the next tab over here, this is where our image comes in. I'm going to grab the same Photoshop file, drop it in here, and select bump. And you can see that just affected the book. So it's doing what I want. Uh, it's a little bumpy here on the surface. I would probably go back in there and knock some of that down. Uh, I think I'll come back just into my overall bump depth and take that down to 0.06. Okay. All right. And let's come back out to the main level of the shader and go down to uh, specular roll-off and drop the Photoshop file in there and repeat the process. And under layer set, we're going to select spec. Okay. And we can come back out here. And the specular color, this is where I'm going to kind of control it, the amount coming in. So it's just giving me a little bit of a sheen on the book. And I want to take the reflectivity all the way down. We're not going to have any reflection on the book. And let's go ahead and get the pages in now. So that is under our Lambert 2. We're going to call this Pages. And under the Color Channel, we're going to select another Photoshop file and come out and grab our Photoshop file and uh, selecting Color here. Okay, so we've got our pages in there now. And this blend right here, I'm going to call this um, Book Edge and bring the color a little bit closer into uh, what we've got here on our book. So bring the saturation down a little bit. Okay. All right, so there is our monster book. We've got the textures on there, and we're going to come back in another lesson that's going to combine the three props we made for our monster, the goblet, the bottle, and the book, and we're going to set it up, light it, and create a turntable. And we'll do that in the next lesson.